Clammed it. Hi, beautiful. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, I'm much better now. Okay. Much, much better now that I'm talking to you. How's it going? We're going better. Go ahead and drink beer tonight. He went over our, yeah, he went over our friends, friend Elton's, and supposed to help Elton with his truck or car or something. And of course, Elton fed him beer while he was there. And now he's back here acting like a jackass. So I got to have a talk with Elton. Have fun. Oh, yeah. Elton tolerates Lauren being That's a rapist. Fun. Why wouldn't he tolerate Roy being an alcoholic? Well. One, Lauren's an alleged rapist. Sorry. Who is now on a scholarship, a lifetime scholarship to go to class <laughs> uh, to, to learn more about that. And uh, and two, that was a long time ago. What what Roy is doing now is, in, my, in Lauren's mind, worse because it's current. Well, okay, you're right. Drinking too much is worse than trying to molest a child a long time ago. Yes, because it, when you look at what's going on right now, Roy could drive headfirst into another car coming home. Lauren is not legally allowed to be around children. Right. So, 
Roy could also drive into someone's house. But he wouldn't do that. No. Do that. But wait, oh, Lauren did do that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You're so quiet. How come? Are you tired? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can, I can hear you a little, a little better now. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> so how did your day go? Work. How'd your day go? I was fine until Roy came back from Elms. <laughs> <laughs> this is call number three. Uh-huh. Does Casey even know who Elton is? I don't think Casey knows who Elton is, but even if Casey does know who Elton is, this is call number three. It's call number three, and you're already at the bitching about my brother stage. And there's zero. There's no excitement, you know, when, when Casey's like, how was your day? It's good now that I'm talking to you. There wasn't like, yeah, me too, or I've wanted to, there was no acknowledgement of it. Just, yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's how I talk to you. Yeah, but you're just a monotone, like, you're, that's just who you are. You have no personality or excitement in your voice because you're not a fun, exciting <laughs> person with a personality. That's why I expect you from you. But he's met Casey before. They were at that sting house. Remember when he tried to show up to have sex with Casey? Because he thought she was Kayla. Yeah, They've been together. You're right. Yeah. Your mom? <laughs> you get on the phone, and it's like you, you get a little bit quieter. Yeah, it's weird. Wait, well, you wanted to talk. Oh, yeah. What's going on? I, I always want to talk to you. About Roy. Yeah, I figured that meant you had something to say. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, what's up? She's already done with it. Okay. Him. You still haven't answered the question that I asked you about how you feel about me mentioning your name in class. <laughs> I, I don't know what you mean. Like, how I feel about what? About me telling them that you're part of my life now. Oh my God. That's so embarrassing. It really is. Okay. And how would that even come up unless Lorne, it was showing, it was probably show and tell day. Yeah. And everyone else is going around and, and sharing their news. And Lorne, he has nothing else to share. And so he's like, oh, I know. And he tells everyone to quiet the fuck down and then shares the news about him and Casey. You think that's how it went? Well, first, what he did was he went to Walgreens. And he printed a huge poster of Casey from the Sting House mm-hmm. so that he could show that and then tell them about how she's currently in his life. I, I picture it a lot like like Greece, um, the scene where John Travolta, Lorne, is back at school and he's telling all of his friends, the T-Birds, about his meeting with, um, with Sandra D. Except none of no of the, none of the people in the class are saying "tell me more." None of the like, yeah, everyone is <laughs> everyone's ignoring, everyone's ignoring Lord, but he's just that's that's what he's doing. That's my picture. And you can't lie to them. I don't know. Or, yeah. Are you, you are you okay with and stuff? So go ahead and tell them if you need to. Okay, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> well, oh. you said you can't lie in class, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said I'm glad you said that because I kind of had no choice last Tuesday. Then why do you ask? Because oh, I wanted to make sure you were all right with it before I told you. Well, what if I had said no? Don't mention me to class. Um, uh, then I would have been off. Fuck. Yeah. I still would have told you that I, yeah. that I already did. Mm-hmm. No, you would not. Mm-hmm. It, okay, well. I, I kind of, where I have to be honest in class, I kind of get stuck because they asked me what was going on with me and with Jamie. Mm-hmm. And What's going on with her? Me. Not that I haven't talked to her for three days now. Mm-hmm. 
which is he good. got ghosted by a catfish. Yeah, but he uh, had, but he had a different catfish. So that's true. Lauren would have been so embarrassed when they got to him, and they were like, "So, Lauren, how were things with uh, a- Jamie, Amy Boutte? your and porn would, star girlfriend?" Yeah, your your hot porn star girlfriend. And he would have said, "Well." Sad to report, teach that things didn't work out, and everyone's like, "Ha ha ha!" Learns a like, whoa, not so fast. She may haven't have worked out, but does anyone remember that little Dateline NBC sting? I remember Lauren. All right, thank you, <laughs> thank you, inappropriate Steve. Uh, inappropriate Steve, you might remember a sweet little lassie named Casey Morrow. Wait, Lauren, is that yeah the decoy from the sting? We're together. And everyone's like, oh! Are you sure that's how it went? Yes. <laughs> I like inappropriate Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I need more from him. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, because of the situation that you and I were in before. What? What situation were we both in? The day with, um, with a sting. They all, all about two of them had something. To Sorry? Say the day. All of them, there was only two of them that had good actually on our side. I don't really know how to say that. <laughs> on our uh, side, about what? What's our side? Uh, our, our side, about talking, talking with each other. It was inappropriate, uh, Steve and Pervy. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, and those two brought it across good points, though. Yeah. What? And I get, I I get really defensive in class. So I do get you? So defensive. Uh, Can you imagine? <laughs> no, and I I think that's where that's where um where sex offender college is is really lacking is they should be monetizing Lauren Armstrong's assignments and cla- Lauren. You know what? Stay as long as you want, but we're gonna put a GoPro on you. Just oh you, my god! Just you. And and. You, we're gonna let people experience school from the viewpoint of Lauren Armstrong. It's like those people that put GoPros on their dogs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you wonder, like, what does your dog get up to? <laughs> what does your dog get? Up to? <laughs> well, you know what's funny is that when we did when we did the first of these, we we got off the uh, we got off the street. My dog had gotten out and had been gone for two hours. Yeah, and, you told me that. And I drove around, and I. I Two hours later, she just comes strolling up to the house. I'm going nuts looking for her. She just comes walking up to the house, like, and I wondered where she had been. And I, that's, that's, that's what it's like with Lauren. Where has Lauren been? Well, she was at the liquor store getting some beer. I yeah, don't she, know. She, was, yeah. she was actually there with Roy. <laughs> they were there. <laughs> they, found, they found my dog and Roy laying in a ditch, like, <laughs> in the stars, like Native Americans, right? <laughs> I don't, I don't know about Native Americans. That's what Blue Boys. That's what Casey said when when Roy was like, "Oh, you made it sound like Roy's living like a Navajo." Oh my god! <laughs> He's living off the land. <laughs> but um, well, they. How many people okay. are in your class? There's the, the six or seven that are in there. Steve, Malik <laughs> Not including the counselor. <laughs> Mr. Babs. And one of them said that. Okay, you see, the way it is, is because this is about me, I, I can talk to you with stuff Just about explain me. it then. Other people in the class, I can't talk about stuff about them. So about me, I can talk to you about anything. Can you repeat um, that three more times for me, yeah. please? One of them... One of them said that um, maybe she, maybe she's she's something good and thinks she's uh, changed and not the the person that he was back then and maybe she yeah. wants to talk to. I've, I've changed. Huh? 
said maybe I changed. Yeah. Yeah. Is a from I haven't changed about anything. What do you mean? No, the the trying they're trying to figure out. Uh, they were trying to give their opinion on on uh, on me and you talking, and where you were part of this thing, and and I that that's where I get rested. Mm -hmm. well, one of them said that maybe <laughs> maybe she thinks that he's changed, and and that's not, and there might be something good about him, and she wants to find out. Yeah, she changed for the worse yeah, if she's changed. dating pedophiles. He, he changed the first time he said it, he said that they said maybe she changed and she's not that like basically maybe she's no longer a person who tricks people into getting arrested at sting houses. Maybe she's a different person now. But when she asked him to clear it up, now he flipped it and he said the class is saying maybe she sees something different in you, Lauren. What's and different about him? He he got out of patterns. Now he's black mold on his feet. Yes. <laughs> Looks like grilled cheese. Oh my god. Who else has grilled cheese feet? That's so gross. That's different. Yeah, the one said that maybe she knows something about this thing that in some parts didn't say right with her or something like that. And maybe maybe she has her own opinion of things. Well, so, you know, my I'm not, I'm not trying to get any, I'm not trying to get any answers out of you. I'm trying to tell you what they Yeah, I mean, you guys met at the sting. You should never discuss it. So I, I don't want you to no. be about that. No, I already that. do that. I just want no. you to know what they said. Okay. Huh? I'm not being huh. defensive. Okay. <laughs> okay. Why? Well, I, I'm, I just wanted to make sure that you know that I wasn't trying to get anything out of you. I just wanted to make sure you know that I was being honest with you about what they said. Well, what did they say? Like, well, what did you tell them? I told them that you and I were talking. Mm -hmm. What else? And the counselor asked me, romantically or friends? I said friends. And because Lauren couldn't flirt his way into a relationship. Yeah. He asked the rest of the guys in the class what what they thought about it. And you know, Lauren said, "Well, we're we're friends, but we're going to be more." He's we, yeah. Are we both well, want more? We're working on getting closer, yeah. or something like that. He didn't. He didn't just say friends. What what they were doing, my my circumstance, and they all gave their opinion of of what they would do. When you tell class, you have to go up to the front, like in front of the whiteboard, and present it like a high school presentation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, we're over the over the phone. Because of COVID, we've been over the phone for. Oh, that's time. right! I forgot they're not in a physical class we'll anymore. Been phone for quite a long time. Still, because of COVID. COVID. Uh, the other, the other guys in the class. Lauren's in a Walmart, just like Kennedy was. Just <laughs> walking around, talking, talking to people at Sex Offender College. Yeah, <laughs> there's like this weird static coming in. About a Walmart. It's got a metal roof. <laughs> <laughs> He's giving him slavery facts. They're calling him Code Pedo, Code T Cap, and Code Hansen in consecutive order over the loudspeaker. And he's just walking around being followed by a mob of Walmart employees and angry men. He's well, that's what you do in the South. That is what that is exactly how we do that in sweet tea. That's what we do now in the South. So you get it. As all as the rest of them, as those two the the those two that was on our side and the other five on our side. Well, I, I kind of think it was the counselor's fault too, yeah. the way that he asked the question. The counselor posed it to make it weird. The way he asked the question <laughs> was, um, if, if somebody was, if that was you in that circumstance where a person was involved in that thing. Would you have? Would you want to have anything to do with them? Yeah, see, that's a After perfectly that, normal question. The other five guys said no. Fucking idiots. Sheep. I, I started getting <laughs> defensive right off the bat, and the counselor shut me up. What? I, I argued with them a little bit. Nice. 
He just put one on mute. Me get my, he told him basically to fuck himself. He didn't want to hit my mouth. Have you heard your mouth so, before? I could so smell his mouth. He shut me up. I yeah. told him, I said, really? I said, I, I've got freedom of speech, and you think you can't take that away, too? Oh, my God. Not the so freedom of speech. I just speech. shut my mouth after that. And at the end of the class, he let me say what I, what I wanted to say. Oh, so I took your freedom of speech away. <laughs> he did for a minute until I said that. And at the end well, of the class, he asked me. Yeah. Uh huh. He kind of did take your freedom of speech away. It wasn't a attempt. Yeah, well, yeah, he did. He could go to jail for that. Yeah, there was some kind of and your manhood. Two things were so I, I didn't oh tell my, my lawyer about that one. When I talked to him. Yeah, tell your lawyer that you're pissed me off. You violate your I'd like to file a lawsuit because my feelings were hurt today. Yeah, um, my rape class teacher told me that I should shut up. I've been at sex offender college for 11 years now. And if there's one thing I will not stand for, it's unprofessional professors. I've sent <laughs> many away, and I will send many more. Sincerely, dictated but not read, Lauren Armstrong. And that's it. He Before. went to the to the dean of sex offender college. Yeah. He's he's friendly with the, he's friends with the dean. When you're there on a full ride basketball scholarship, you're good <laughs> with the dean. I you're forgot about the basketball. Dean. You're in the fraternities. You're sleeping in. You're skipping class and grabbing ass and every. It's okay because Lauren's gonna Lauren uh, as long as when it comes time for that Sweet 16 basketball tournament and we've got to play against Waterville again. We need our we need our star point guard <laughs> out there on the court. <laughs> I don't care what you need to do, but you get this man to the championships. And everyone just kind of keeps a blind eye. But this time it's not Lauren, it's Sadie. It's... <laughs> <laughs> right. It's Airbud. Airbud. Yeah. Bud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Airbud! And it's Bud! <laughs> the, the, you mean the star player from the other team is Bud? And he shows up and Lorne locks eye to eye with his toughest competitor yet, his past. <laughs> you left me behind, Lorne. <laughs> See, that's a story. <laughs> Air Bud <Air> 11. <laughs> you left me behind, Lorne. Just shut up and play. <laughs> then there's the whistle. Yeah. <laughs> It's like I'm stuck in a place where I get out. I I promised Bryce that I wouldn't that I wouldn't fight about them, no. uh, fight with them about being in class right now. Because Bryce That's said he Bryce. Bryce is my probation officer. Bryce is his homie. Uh, he's part of he's also the supervising probation officer. Not all yeah, different probation officer. Yeah. Because Bryce is supervising probation officer. Yeah, two. Uh, uh, so you you have to take yeah. What's that? He got the big guy on you. No. Yeah. Well, he's he's he must be a troublemaker. He's bad. Bad, he's a bad boy. Yeah. <laughs> Is this the one Lauren thought was gay? <laughs> no. The, my know. my normal supervisor, uh, my normal probation officer, moved to a different area. Bag. So Bag. until they find a, a replacement for her, <laughs> oh. the is is taking over. So if someone leaves. Without a replacement, it's probably because it wasn't planned, right? Or like they begged for a transfer, right? Or or something. There was no replacement, and all of a sudden, Lauren's probation officer is the supervising probation officer, and he doesn't see that as like a as anything. That's just normal. No, um, why would Lauren think anything of that? Like you said, he's a star student. Like if you're if you're at your job, and all of a sudden the owner of the company decides you need to report to them every day, um. That that's normally if that and you don't before that's probably not a good thing. Not I thought that just meant that the owner really liked me. Well, you look, you own a lemonade stand. You report to yourself. It's completely different. Okay, stop. I thought I liked me. <laughs> well, you were wrong. <laughs> no, I repeat, nobody likes you, even you. Okay, and I want you to put that in your fucking lemonade stand. I'm telling my therapist you said that. <laughs> Is it Bryce? <laughs> How did you know? Until we find her replacement, so yeah. which I mean, shouldn't be too long anyway. We're just now we're just we're just chilling. Find replacements. Me and Bryce, we're cool. 
but oh, uh, this is what what brought all my questions today. Okay, spill it. Uh, okay. Did they say it was weird that I like to talk on the phone in my car? Mm-hmm. No, they didn't. Because I didn't mention anything to them about that. Oh, that was just your own thought. What about the that old people dance studio? That's it's not gonna happen. Uh, so what did you uh, mean by that? It, it was it was my own. Um, and okay. it was a red stay flag. Gonna, gonna stay honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> so, Has well, he ever done that? All I could think was, okay, well, it was just. Staying in her, own, in her car talking to me, not going in her house. So, what's in her house that she doesn't want me to be here? <laughs> He's already telling her the ways that he is a needy, jealous psycho. I mean, I think she picked that up from the incessant emailing. Well, yeah, but, but to then just keep reinforcing it, because this is still, this is call three. And he's already like, and he's laughing about it, like it's cute. So you, you wanted to talk to me in the car, so it made me think there must be someone or something in there you don't want me to hear. What if her phone just doesn't work in the house, or she has roommates and doesn't want to walk in, or she just any number of reasons? But why would that be the first thing that he would think of? You only think of shady shit if, if shady shit is the first thing you pop to in your head. It's because you do shady shit. Well, he has cheated on every single catfish he's had. Yes, he's he's virtually cheated on every virtual girlfriend he's had, but he's never had even a a, a sniff of the underside of a nip in his is an entire life. So that was I mean? so specific, and you I'm, put that image in my mind, and I don't appreciate oh, it. I just, but now it's Lauren's nose, just like right under. <laughs> I'm calling HR. <laughs> this is ridiculous, <laughs> Bryce. I need to talk. <laughs> I'm sending an email as we speak. If inappropriate Steve wasn't bad enough, <laughs> Bryce, you need to do something now. I'm transferring. All my husbands burn that off. <laughs> You're a little smart ass. But seriously, why don't you talk to me? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I got so that was, that was the reason, because there's, I'm hiding something in my house. The, that was what I was wondering. That, that's Wow. That's happened to me before. That's happened to me before. No. That's that's why very, that popped um, into my head. Very paranoid thought. Yep. What? Uh, no uh, way. It's happened to me before. That's why that mm. popped into my head. But How then, many times then, that happened to you? Oh, that's happened. Uh, twice. Was a lot so of three times too. you dated someone who talked in their car, who had husbands. Yeah. 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 Well, one had a fiance. He's so full of shit. And then I didn't know uh, about. Well, well, one was Winnie and the other was Paula. Yes. Had lived with her with her family. Well, uh, so wait, wait, hold on. The, the other one lived with her family. Is he talking about Molly? Oh my god! You know what? He I might be. Who lived with her family other than the children that he talked to? Because I, you know, I don't, I don't believe any of this until I thought about that. The only people who were living with family would have been one of the children that he was talking to, or, or um, who was it? Who was it that pretended her daughter was her niece? Was that Amanda James? Yes. I mean, no, possibly Amanda James was 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 also doing that. If this was just a, a grift, you know, and she was just playing the long con to get as much as she could out of him, but I don't know. I I I think Lauren, he, he he's either making this up or he is talking about a child. Well, we also know that he's had multiple victims, so it could very well so. be yeah, two kids. Be, yeah. yeah, it doesn't have to be exactly, but either that or he's making it up. But there were no adult women that were in this situation with Lauren ever. That makes me sad. Yeah. I'm telling Brian. Okay, but what were their husbands doing when you were hanging out with them? Like when they were at your house, where were their husbands? 
at home. They were I have no idea. Waiting for their wives to come home. Never asked them because I didn't know that, that she had a fiance. No, she had, he had no or idea. like when you went over to your girlfriend's house, you didn't see any pictures of them up there. No, no, this was this was over the phone. It was over. I met her. Oh, okay. This was oh. part of the church of Con crap. Oh, okay. There's your problem. Well, we'll never fall for that again. Yeah. You can date yeah. people over the phone. Who would have oh, thought I'm, he's lying? I'm not saying that because there's you. <laughs> yeah. Because none of the catfish uh, did that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I shouldn't have dated anybody that was involved with that church of God crap. That's for damn sure. Yeah. It really. Uh, that was a terrible trip. But it's over now. Okay. No, that never happened again. That's He's too smart. Yeah. All your questions. What else you got for me? <laughs> what else you got for me? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm telling you, so I can be honest with you. Confidence <laughs> is just dripping off. Because of I want you to know everything. I don't want to hide anything from you. God, he has okay, nothing I, to talk about. Ever. I talked to my lawyer yesterday. Oh, nice. Okay. And I told okay. him the problem that I had. I told him the problem that I had with Bryce. So I know Bryce uh, with my counselor. Okay. okay. <laughs> and I told my lawyer about you. He asked me if that was nuts. <laughs> oh, okay. So this is in fucked up order. This actually the the remember the lawyer boy letter that we yes wrote? should actually probably come after this call. Wow, you really fucked it up, didn't you, Wes? I didn't. No, I didn't make this playlist. That was Sigmund, and it was really it was Blue Boy's fault for not putting it in order in the first place. Sigmund had to had to go through and put it all all eighty seven things in order. So there you go, always blaming other people for your well, own fuck ups. Well, right now you're the one who just said called Sigmund a fuck up, and I hope Sigmund doesn't hear that. I called you a fuck up because well, you're trying to blame and, it on him. Well, Sigmund put the playlist together, so by default you're really. Sigmund, I apologize. I really do apologize. And Nuggets, you can just sit there and shame. It's woman month. So just sit there and shame. And no, because, no, you're gaslighting me. <laughs> uh, uh, it sucks because I, I don't relate you to the show anymore. Yeah. You know we're mm. there. And they're relating you to the show. Why wouldn't they? How could they do that? Yeah, I mean... That's fair. And and my brother Richard, I called him, and, and he reacted the same way as as my lawyer did. What? Mm. And he, they, they Ralph and Lori said it might be some kind of setup. Well, Ralph and Lori are living in the future. I, I love that his his family's like Lauren. It's probably a setup there. You're gonna like sit down with her, and Chris Hansen's gonna come out. Like everyone's into reunions right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's reunions, a reboot. Reunions, reboots, and uh, they're they're really big right now. They're gonna have you. You're gonna be like at some at some Airbnb, and she's gonna give you a brownie, and you, and then you're gonna realize you're sitting in the same chair that you were sitting <laughs> in before, and then they're gonna sell that chair on eBay, Lauren. That's what they're gonna do to you. And Lauren's like, "No, fuck you, Richard." Oh <laughs> There's like the painting that's on the wall. Yeah, everything and stuff duplicated to the T. And he doesn't even realize they zoom out, and that's when you realize Lauren's been sitting in an exact duplicate of the Sting House and had no idea, <laughs> had no idea the whole time. And then Chris comes walking out. What's crazy is that Chris did really want to talk to him again. Oh, yeah, well, of course. I mean, he he knew that people would want to, people would have an interest in in seeing that interview. So that's true, absolutely, absolutely. Because just with the, with what's Lauren done, with what Lauren's done since prison, and he has the most unique experience out of all of the the T Cap predators with you know community being built around him that at one time he thought he was a part of. <laughs> I love that. I love that he really thought that people just really liked him. And he was amongst people who felt like he had been wronged. Of all the people mm -hmm. on the show, Lauren had been wronged for what reason? Because it wasn't like it wasn't like you read his chat log and you go, oh, you know, it actually is pretty iffy. What he, like from the beginning, from the beginning, Mister Penis, Mister Penis is out, and he's 
and he's very weird. And I mean, we know who Lauren is, but why he would think that there would be a entire, not one or two weird. And if some people were out there who had your back on something like that, you would know they were fucked up people. Are you calling Sylvester Stallone fucked up? And Leah Ramini. Yeah. I want, I want them both. If they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, You're sick fucks. Listen, Sly and Leah. <laughs> <laughs> Roy, Mum, and Paul. And I think it's a setup. Like how? Gonna yeah, come that's what, that's what, I don't know. Why is he telling everyone? But, uh, well, that's what I'm trying to figure out is, you know, how can it be a setup? She's 36 years old. Yeah. What do you mean, how could it be a crap. setup? She's not hiding anything from me. She's not hiding shit. And, but they don't talk to you, and they don't. And well, especially when you told me you don't, don't tell Chris that we're talking. And the, that's the problem I have is that they don't know what you and I talk about, and they don't don't tell Chris we're talking because <laughs> Blue Boy do. <laughs> That sounds reminiscent of well, another time. Well, because Blue Boy knew that if Lauren told, if Lauren did talk to Chris and said, "Oh, I'm talking to Casey right now," he'd be like, "What? Wait, hold on, what? <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, we're we're talking. We're we're we might be dating. You know? Can you imagine? Can you imagine the follow up to that? Oh my God, that could potentially have ruined the catfish. <laughs> you know the way that you and really confused Casey. Things. Yes, and and maturity that you have well yeah she's like 30 they don't know that you that you really don't have anything to do with chris anymore they all assume you do well yeah we you know, just worked on that they just keep couple shows yeah they just keep they relate you to the show because that's all they that's all they can think about and they're not thinking it's 14 years later mm -hmm. they're thinking they're thinking back then but I'm not thinking back then. I haven't thought about back then for. I haven't related you to the show for quite a long for a long time. That's weird. And but, mom, I told mom. What did mom say? Yeah. <laughs> he told his mom. Yeah. Other than really, I said yeah. And Paul, Paul, he just says whatever. <laughs> Do whatever you want. I don't care. This, this is call three, and he has run his entire family to share this news that he's talking to someone who shows no interest in a relationship with him. I, but it's insane. They're phone acquaintances. That's it. That that is the that is the extent of the relationship. They're not. There's no romance here. Why is he running around and telling everyone in his family that he's talking? To Casey Morrow, that that's something that you would think he would be nervous to tell people about because that's a really the people are going to ask who, and then you're going to have to explain the girl from the. Remember when I got arrested, Mom? That time when I called you and I was crying because I tried to. Okay, well, the girl from that show, no, not that, no, Kay, no, Mom, Kayla wasn't. <sighs> Mom, Kayla wasn't real. <laughs> Kayla, yeah, it was this lady from yeah, pervert exactly. So no, the girl who the actress, yes, but yes, her, we're dating now. Do you Wait. know what it sounds like to me? Mm. It sounds like you're sipping on some haterade. Mm. And That's you just don't want Lauren to be in love. I just don't want Lauren to be happy. Is what it is. No. Like, since I'm not happy. How can Lauren be happy? Maybe you I need to start drinking um, supportive juice. Well, I like <laughs> tepid water, personally. I'm on Sloth Cat's team. <laughs> tepid water and a piece of bread donut. It's delicious. And a honey bun. <laughs> you're not sweet. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And Roy said, "The past is the past. Yeah, gotta leave it in the past." Yeah, that, that's the way I think too. I gotta leave it in the past. I think Roy meant to I, pass I, the I past to leave her. In everybody, the, past. the the people that were negative thinking about it. I told him, I, I said, "Why would you be against me talking to her?" I said, "She's not the one that did anything. Said, I'm the one that did anything." Even in class, I said that. Mm -hmm. I, I was pissed. That's solid. I said, I said me, me not talking to her just because she was in this thing. I said she's not the one that that did the crime. It was me that did the crime. Yeah, Lawrence the pedophile. I said I ain't no way I should condemn her for doing something that I did. 
Right. Well, she uh, entrapped him. I, I was, mm-hmm. Oh, God, when I pissed it off. But I, I even, what day was it? Um, Thursday. I called my counselor. So I was pissed. I was on my way back from Chicago and I was pissed, but I kept thinking about it. And I told him, I'm, I'm, I said, why on earth would you want me to ask uh, want to ask class that. So, I, so Lauren left class and he's driving home and he's so mad that his not relationship was called into question and the motives behind it were questioned. And, and if Lauren should be putting himself into the situation, Lauren was so mad he called this man to, to like bitch at him. How dare you? How dare <laughs> you? dare you sir you come into my rape class and you tell me that i shouldn't be talking to the girl that i wanted to rape wow say that to yourself again and then tell me how fucked up it sounds <laughs> it's that bitch while i don't make me bitch i will get bryce on the phone so goddamn fast yeah i got friends in the federal government a probation officer, the supervisor probation, <laughs> my probation officer, bitch. And then he hangs up. And then, and then he cries. Then they have a meeting with the dean, uh, the dean the next day. The dean gives the professor Baps quite the dressing down. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to talk to our star basketball yeah. player like that, huh? His mind, his mind should not be on schoolwork. It should be on his handy footwork. Lauren, get out there on the court. And Lauren runs out there in his Bobby Hill, his modern day Bobby Hill. <laughs> Bobby Hill. <laughs> that's my purse. I don't know. That's, that's the uniform that the that the basketball team plays. <laughs> <laughs> and they're out on the court in their modern day Bobby Hills uh, and New Balance shoes, white Lauren, New Balance shoes, and the uh, and the Bobby Hills. Lauren does look like old, sad Bobby Hill. Like, like yeah, like Bobby Hill that just didn't listen to his dad. And became a pedophile. (laughs) Bobby, no! (laughs) I like kids, Dad. Why are you dancing with those guys? (laughs) I said, you act like she's the one that that did something. I said, and it was me that did something. So so I'm pissed off at you for... You did, you do. For making me feel like, like I shouldn't talk to her because I did something. She said, she said, well... Didn't she set you up? I said, well, sure. She's not the one that set me up. She was the actress. No, I just had to play the little girl. I just got to play the little girl. Yeah. <laughs> the little girl, Lauren. But you, you know, you he didn't pick up on that at all. Set me up. That was, was perverted justice. Yeah, set cool. me up. Uh, you know, it was my fault that I, that I went there. Mm-hmm. So it pisses me off the way that they're reacting to stuff. What do you want, Roy? Yeah, a regular, regular biscuit, right? Yeah. Is that cool? Yeah, go ahead. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, I'll go talk to Sue. I'm on the phone. He sounds so mad at Roy. He is, yeah, he hates when Roy. No, Sadie's in here. He's fine. Yes, it's okay. Sorry. God, he's got such an attitude. Yeah, but... It's important that you know this stuff because I'm, I'm sure Bryce is going to wind up having a talk with me too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, God, not Bryce. Uh, yeah. Listen, Lauren, we, so, I need to stop talking about I just Bryce. want you to be, have a heads up on stuff. What? I'm Tina Liberante, and this is Blues News. After weeks of rumors and the promise of exciting news, Blue Boy and Sloth Cat delighted their paid Discord today with a huge announcement. Hey, Blue Universal Studios family. Thanks for making Mo Negros Plus the fastest growing Lorne related channel on Roku in the first quarter of 2024. Now I want to give back. You guys voted and chose Cornville, Maine as the location for the first ever MoFest, October 18th, 2024. That's right. 
We are renting the non-piss covered property next to Lawrence and we are going to party like it's October 18th, 2007. Luxury villas, catered meals, camping, glamping, slap fights, fist fights, musical guests, special guests, and me, Sloth Cat. This is an exclusive Blue Universal LLC event in association with Mo Negros Plus. If you ain't in the Discord, you ain't getting in. Right on, bro. According to one insider, this news was met with much joy among the rabid fan base. We were so excited. There was a lot of fist pumping, a lot of water emojis in the chat. If I had a job, I'd tell my boss to go fuck himself and head up there right now, but work is for pussies. And anyway, I can't wait to party with the Lorne Identity and Sloth Cat in October. It's going to be epic. I'm Tina Liberante. All right, so now we're moving on to uh, call four. The difference. Oh, oh, there's the grilled. Oh, look at it! Like, tell me that doesn't look like you put some butter in the pan and then you get it. You, you get it just toasty, warm, and that's a grilled cheese foot. I'm never eating grilled cheese ever again. Okay, but you dip that foot in some tomato soup and tell me you would at least take a little bite. It's a little nibble. Of that of that pre-diabetic foot. Mmm, yeah, scrumptious. That's fine. The mic trusted with you and with Jamie is is completely different because it's like with Jamie, I, I trust Jamie. But, you don't but I'm still on edge with Jamie and always have been. That makes sense. And with you, I don't have that. You always have been. Didn't you date her for like two years? I bring a bullshit. Yeah. So the reason I always have been is because her best friend Will being there all done. Oh, Why is it so? Will was married to it's Winnie, so creepy. And Winnie was the one that betrayed yeah. you for a year. Oh, okay. So yeah. Winnie was me mm-hmm. and was married to Will. Yeah, and I didn't. I never knew anything about Winnie even being married. Okay, but uh, so you don't, no. you haven't trusted Jamie for dating here for two years because she had a friend. Yeah, I'm well, confused. see, Jamie and Will left California to get away from them because Will and Winnie got divorced because oh. Winnie fell in love with me wow. and she told Will that. And she gave the, the had divorce papers delivered to Will. And so Jamie and Will both uh, both wound up getting COVID. Wow. And after they both got over COVID, Jamie had her voice problem. So she had a friend in Nashville, and that's where one of the specialists was, was in Nashville. So she Is this to, the Young and the Will Restless? That friend in Nashville. And that's where oh, Jamie still nice. is. That's an insane yeah. story. Okay. So that made her not trustable. Why? Well... She, she still has something to do with Winnie's sister. Oh. <laughs> and Winnie's sister wasn't trustable either. <laughs> Winnie, okay. So this, Winnie tried to just date. things about that whole, that whole group. He used to hate the, her guts and then he wanted actually, to date uh, her. A woman named Emma was the one that actually started the whole thing. And she wound up getting other people involved to catfish me. Oh, and... Did. It was just a whole cycle of being catfished for a few years. And without me knowing what was going on and me not knowing who was behind the whole thing. And it turned out that Emma and Winnie were behind the whole thing. The whole fucking time. Oh, um, how Andy. many people have catfished you? See, it was, Ember was working with Winnie. And then they got this other person, Matilda. And then they hired some guy named Victor. Um, it was a whole, it was like a whole group of people they would coordinate and get together. Just how many characters were in the art? There's so many. I, that were... I asked if someone would please put together like a, a timeline. <laughs> a timeline that, that made sense. And I asked Ember at one point when she was still around and she said she she said she couldn't do it for legal reasons, but I don't believe that's true. What does that mean? Like, 
like it would implicate them in what they were doing and but i don't that's not true like no. anyone can put together a, a timeline but yeah because especially when you're new to this shit it can be so confusing when you get, when you don't know who is who and if you've never heard certain calls because they don't exist anymore like you might even think i thought nathaniel was a made-up person until someone started uploading old nathaniel stuff i, I did thought, too yeah i thought he was just made up i didn't know he was a real person like, hello uh it's, hello? It's like, <laughs> hello everyone uh it's nathaniel uh so i, I didn't <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know he was real. Then one day, old, it was like old time pornography channel started uploading Nathaniel stuff, and it's very different. So does that mean that if Blue Boy had put his uploads in chronological order, that he would be arrested because it's a legal problem, and that's why Sigmund did it? The A, and that's why Sigmund flipped those two. Mm, like see. when they show when on Breaking Bad, which show you're still not old enough to not yet. Ask me again on your birthday uh, on Breaking Bad they actually use the real, like a real process to make meth. They learned from the DEA and they flip some things around so that oh. you could just watch the show and learn how to make meth. Um, and that's what, that's what Sigmund did. He did a little flippity flop. Uh, yeah, that's a legal term. That it's makes legal. a lot of sense. It's a legal term. There's actually, well, I would actually say three because Emma was a, just a, a friend. Yeah. But she was the one that was Helping to set the whole thing up for from some girl named Ramona, which was the first one, and then Winnie, which was the second one. She portrayed you. Then they'd record me. I'm gonna tell they they get me all upset, and, and especially when I was drinking beer, they they'd get me all wound up, and. I'd go off on them and they'd record me. How so? The worst part. Like, how did they wind you up? You know, they'd, they'd wind me up by um, by having Winnie do stupid shit, like doing drugs. <laughs> and um, they're having, so uh, having her. They like having drug her. her? No, well. Hey, can you pause for a second? Yeah. Can you hear that on my end? The silence in the background? Okay, good. Because there's like, there's sirens going off right now. I didn't know if you could hear that on my end. I didn't want it to come through the mic. Are they air sirens? Or like... Yeah, it's a tornado watch. Are you guys, are you okay? Um. Yeah, it should be good. It's not a warning or anything. No, go outside and look. <laughs> I'm going to go look for a funnel cloud. It goes, go, look, go look real quick. I'll wait. <laughs> but they, they have her pretending like she was doing drugs right then and there on the phone. Oh, okay. They'd have her acting like she was doing drugs. They have her acting. I'd be trying to tell her not to do her. How do you act like you're doing drugs on the phone? Well, it's like you're snorting stuff. <laughs> Make a snorting sound. Oh Sounds like you're snorting up drugs. So, Lauren, you dated a, a woman on the phone who pretended to snort drugs and act yeah. crazy. <laughs> and you continue to do it. And that was that was fake girlfriend number two who pretended to be me. So you dated a version of me for who knows long that was sniffing drugs and going crazy on the phone. Yeah. What do you not understand about that? I mean, if you were Casey and you the real Casey and you found out that Lauren had dated four previous versions that, of people he thought were you, that's not going to make you f that. That's really going to creep you out. Like he's that's so fucking weird. Yeah, that I mean, like this whole at this point, like it would have been an insta block already. But like learning that kind of information, any sane person that had made it that far would yes. be gone. Like I said, when I when I found out about the the robot, when I found out about this troll with the with the robot and Casey back when it was still going on, I thought it was a dumb. I just heard I I just heard what was going on, and it sounded so fucking stupid. How are you really, really pretending to be Casey again? And but like, he, there was and K, but Casey wasn't even the most ridiculous part of it because it was a robot. A porn star robot. Yeah, by that point, the hit, Casey, Blue Boy using a voice voice changer to be Casey isn't even the 
craziest part of the whole thing. Because there's a thruple with a robot <laughs> that does porn and uses a male voice because Lauren couldn't understand the female voice. That's my favorite part is that he preferred the male British oh. voice because he couldn't understand the other he ones. It. He couldn't understand that bitch. Give me that male voice again. Okay. How short pick. <laughs> Go get a condom. <laughs> And that got you wound up. Yeah, because I don't, I don't, I've done drugs. I don't, don't like drugs. Don't believe in drugs. And she was. Well, so I don't either. after oh she, did I've never even seen an Advil. The first time, why did you continue talking well, to her? I'm a desperate pedophile. I, <laughs> I don't know. Because for well, okay, for a while. Uh, she didn't do the stuff for a while. Mm. She, she did. Uh, acted like she was all neat and clean for a while. You know, until until they got me so that I had feelings for her. Okay. So then she started doing the drug thing. Then it was just a the drug thing. It was just one thing after another. They just constantly think up. Yeah, then it was an all sex thing. It was, it was sexual. It was, just doing all kinds of stupid sex shit, and it was supposedly because of drugs. Lauren, stop talking. Uh, then why did you let it continue? The, oh because God. I still have feelings for her. The pedophile thing, remember? So finally, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, though. Well, when, when you love someone, you do things that don't make sense. Yeah. Like, go hang on. Else. When it doesn't make sense to hang on. It's a very uh, Hallmark quote. She was a drug addict who would have sex with people. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Casey. That was you. Well, she, <laughs> no, no, Casey. Or not, you were a drug addict that would have sex with people. Do you get it now? That's how much you mean to me. <laughs> I think you owe me an apology, Casey. Casey, that was what I was willing to do for you. If that doesn't, Casey, that means you can go out tonight and get really high on drugs and go fuck whoever you want, and I'll still be here tomorrow. Okay, honey, I love you. It's sweet that way, right? Uh, sure. Like he's given her permission. Yeah. Because he loves her. He will call her a cunt and a bench and a whore, though. Yeah, but he'll take her back. Just he'll just want to hold it over her head forever. Yeah. That sounds that seems like a good trade-off. Yeah. You guys, you Gen P? Wait. What? Z. <laughs> Gen P? <laughs> It sounds like a drug from like a 90s show. Give me another hit of Gen P. <laughs> it's like yeah. an after school PSA. Right to my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> they got their backwards oh. caps on. Like, Gen P is for me. <laughs> oh my God. Um, guys, if, if, well, I heard that. Is that thunder? Yeah. All right, now, now go outside and look. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll be right back. I thought she was. I thought she was, yeah. And she pretended to be me. Yes. She pretended to be you for for a year. She pretended to be for you. a year. And he didn't. So what did they say it? when no. they were pretending to be me? Just stuff you say, like "Give me that dick." And I'm so <laughs> hot. For at first, it was go rent out a condom. Yeah, you know, dance school that and that that you wanted to dance school and that um. They do a good drive by all the time. And, well, Emma, Emma said she could drive by at any time and see you in your dance. Just leading Whether dance. Working or not. And that's part. That's kind of how part of it started right there was because she, Emma would drive by and she, uh, she say she was driving by and she would call me <laughs> and she said that she was looking at through the windows of your dance school right now and she couldn't see you in there. And she said that, well, there was one time that she hung up the phone, hung up with me, told me that she was going to hang up and she was going to go in and text you if you were there. And <laughs> and she pretended like she like she actually went in to see if you were there. And then she came back and called me and told me that you weren't there. Oh, God damn it. She just missed her. And oh my she God. said that the employees in, your employees inside said that you hadn't been in all day. Oh, no. And that that's kind of how all that thing with the drugs got started. <laughs> I don't know if I ever heard this one before because they weren't in, in order but um, 
so the hearing how the whole Casey one thing started, that's fascinating. It really is. And the way that Lauren just ate it up, like it was, I can't believe it. He's that dumb. The way he tells it now, he tells it like it's a true story. And like, you know, he said, and she would drive past your, your dance studio and, see, and, well, and she said, like, he has to remind himself that that's not a real story. That he, Ember, he took it to heart and really believed Ember it. Ember really didn't drive past the dance studio every day. And she's looking through the window. She's just staring through the window to, to, to see if Casey's there. Then she goes inside. And they're like, we don't know where she is. <clears throat> she's doing drugs. So how she's, is Ember going go from staring at this woman through a window and just, you know, having no idea who she is? She's just staring through the window and has to go and ask her employees to their friends, and she's talking about Ember being a, a, Mex a, a Mexican, a, a dirty Mexican. How did that well, happen? Well, because Emma was the plug for the KP. Oh, wait, the oh, Jim P. Jim P. <laughs> I said KP. What does that even mean? That's the that's the street name for Jim P. <laughs> <laughs> it's even more, it's even more blueberry flavor. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, don't fuck with KP. It's Jim P on crack. Blueberry crack. If he looked like me, how did what? No. How did you think he no. was me? Well, the, I I took Emma's word. Well, they sent me some pictures of of you. Yeah. And and told me that you were sleeping. I went and just took their word for it by the pictures, so I knew what you looked like. So they said I was doing drugs. Yes. Yeah. But no. God. What, Very, very sad. Uh, okay, Lauren, and then after you found out she wasn't Casey, you broke up with her, right? <laughs> Lauren? <laughs> Go on, Lauren. You, did you meet her when you realized nope. it wasn't me? Nope. I met Emma. Emma and her boyfriend, Dan, I met them. Because they actually, I actually invited them to my house. I love that video. They came to my house, and I didn't know at the time what they were doing, but they brought a six pack of beer over. Mm. And what happened to your house? What happened to my house? Mm -hmm. What do you mean, what happened to my house? You were living in a house? <laughs> oh, oh, no, the trailer. <laughs> they tore it oh, apart, Casey. Okay. <laughs> I, I just consider it a, a house. It, it's, it's a trailer house. <laughs> I hate saying the word trailer. trailer. I, hate house. That I, I, hate that, yeah, I hate saying the word that I live in the trailer. <laughs> That's why I keep well, trying to turn it into a house. <laughs> the trailer house doesn't sound better. Yeah. It I don't has know. The just word the word trailer house. in it. You know what I mean? Uh, I know. Yeah, I know. Um, whatever makes <laughs> you feel better, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, so it just mean. makes me feel better. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but. So how were you in love with her if you never met? That's where I'm confused. Well, because we'd have, we'd be over the phone. We'd, we'd be over the phone, like, all the time. Yeah, but, like, you never, when I was like, working. went on dates or anything. So, like, how did you love no. her? Just spending all that time with her on the phone and going through things with her that you know yeah, I think right. that in my mind was real. Like the tub shitting. Yeah. But it wasn't. It wasn't. So you loved her and the entire time she was playing a game with you. Talk yeah. about her daughter that you tried to wow. grow. Well <laughs> and then it was said. I, yeah, you're right. When I invited that, Emma over here. Uh huh. Uh huh. When I invited Sorry, Emma over here. Trying to figure it all out. Very confusing. It it, it is. It's, it's very confusing. I know. Very when I invited Emma over here, Emma and her boyfriend, um, I didn't know what they were doing, but they brought a six pack of beer over. Okay. And Emma was sitting next to me. And, mm -hmm. Of course, Emma had always talked about her 
tits and her tattoos and all this shit. <laughs> and I wasn't attracted to them. I, <laughs> Emma was married when I first met her. That's yeah. never stopped. What, is, what does obsession. this have to do with anything? Well, listen, he's, oh, he's getting there. Well, because of her obsession with me. Yeah. She started having, she lost her, wound up doing drugs and losing her son. <laughs> Because she got so obsessed. Oh Lord, why are you believing these stories? I forgot that she had a son at one point. Yeah, a son that she lost because of her obsession with Lauren. Um, and but he believes this. He doesn't believe any of the other. Why? Why would he believe the story? Why would he believe that that she was obsessed with him? And you know, he she I, and he he didn't. I don't know if he finishes, but the tits and tattoos thing. Where was he going? It sounds like when he's talking about uh. The, what was her name? Samantha, Samantha, maybe Hooker. Who? The, the girl who was going to live in his in his shipping that he wanted to live in his shipping container. Oh, I didn't know her name was Samantha. Uh, it's it's some, something with the S because SMH stands for you know Samantha maybe Hooker or Sarah maybe Hooker. I don't so, think that's what SMH stands for. It is what it stands for. That's what Reborn told me. It's shaking my head. I'm shaking my head right now. Your stupidity. Okay. Well, that's just mean. Well, knock it off. <laughs> um, back to what i would say i forgot what i was saying but yeah that, that's that's he's oh he treated her the same way he once once she left when she didn't want to live in the uh shipping container he was talking about how she thought she was such hot shit and he you see how judgy he is he was about to talk about ember's tattoos and, and tits like he was going to downgrade her in some way well she did have the octopus tattoo there and that has eight legs just like spiders do like spider and spiders Satanist, Satanist, Octopus, Octopus, Church of God. Yeah. Do you see what I'm getting at? I get right. Yeah. That's a, it's not, it's not a, it's four degrees of Kevin Bacon. It's, it's not that difficult to piece those things together. Why are you tracing around his foot? It looks delicious. <laughs> You're so gross. <laughs> it actually looks like a little teddy bear sitting down. If you, look you know at what? It, I see it. it. It's, it's a beanie a baby. Yeah, it's a little beanie baby bear, and it's just like kind of sitting down, propped oh up, and sell on eBay. It's like when people see water stains that look like yeah. Mary, and yeah, people come to worship it. I want to know in the chat what do you see in Lawrence foot other than a delicious grilled cheese sandwich? It's a Rorschach test. That's for me and hanging around the wrong people. And but she got a divorce they from all, her husband. The wrong person was a thirteen-year-old Lauren. Sorry. She got a divorce from her husband, and her and Dan wanted to be a boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah, boyfriend and girlfriend. And Dan was in this same Church of Cod thing as that Emma was in. Mm -hmm. and, so then, but then, how do you know any of that's true? Uh, I don't, for a fact, because I never, I never did research on them. Oh. I, I took their word. So none that. of that could be true. Yeah, could none be of happily could be married and everything. Yeah, could be. I mean, probably is. Me probably is. They're messed up. Period. I mean, the whole thing was messed right up. I see a dog wearing sunglasses. But Emma and Dan <laughs> got up here and this <laughs> bag of beer for me. And that bitch got on dog. Emma had a tank top on. And <laughs> the Emma had a tank top. Shattered and cleavage shown. Oh my god! As much as she possibly could. For the wanting, uh, wanting me to see her tattoos and all this stuff. Because she's like, a slut. It, 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 it looked terrible. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lauren, do you think maybe they were distracting you so that they could record you without you knowing? You think what? Maybe, well, well, does he know that there was a video recorded? Be you know, realistic. He, he's going to get to it. Let's see if I, maybe he does mention it. <laughs> Why does that matter? I, I, she was always talking about her tits and her tattoos. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, Dan was across the, the table from okay, me. But what does yeah, it matter, though? I keep asking, and you're not telling me why that was it bedazzled. Mm -hmm. Everything else because it it, it, it it always irritated me that she did that because I considered her a friend, and she was always trying to hit on me. And I it did not irritate him. He lapped it up. He was begging for pictures from her. And even one night when he was talking about how he was he was going to break up with someone, and then I might have to go for you, Ember. And she was like, oh, well, you know, Lauren, I would love that. But and he's like, but I won't because I know you and Dan are happy. I think it's kind of weird that he never really went after Ember as hard as he did for the other catfish. I don't think it's, I, I really think it was because he was scared of her sexually. 
You know what? That's probably right. And also because his mom and stuff knew who Ember was and mm-hmm. what she had done, he she would have never okayed it. And he and doesn't like, like tattoos. It, yeah. Yeah. Like tits, tits and tattoos. Tattoos. He doesn't want those things. <laughs> tattoos. Some tattoos away from me. Like it. I had always told her not don't do it. Don't Stop. hit on me. Don't she's just do my it. friend. Lauren. And she had always done it, and that it right. irritated right. me. Okay, but why is that being? Why are you mentioning that? Like, because what does that have that for, to do with? She did it for the a reason. Girl, it was like the fact that you knew and doing drugs okay. or whatever. Because the, the uh, Emma, Emma and, and, and Winnie were friends. Emma and Winnie and Dan were all friends. Oh, okay. So they, they were all doing they were all doing this catfish thing together. And when, when Emma and Dan were here, Dan was sitting across the table from me recording me when I didn't know it. Oh my goodness! And oh wait, so he did know. They had brought gifts that. That Winnie had wrapped up for me. And <laughs> like what? <laughs> oh yeah, they played that recording of Winnie. Yeah. A terrible job wrapping up. See? And it, it looked like a two-year-old wrapped up. Well, yeah, because Winnie did it. Seriously, it oh. looked like a two-year-old wrapped up. Do you think Lauren could do but, better? And, but like the, the, whole pa- thing was just so the pause for reaction there. You know, like, yeah, he was waiting for her to be like, oh my god. Right, like th- that, how how was that the impactful moment where you paused for reaction? That's how you know this man doesn't know how to tell a story. Someone who knows how to tell a story knows that that's not your pause location. <laughs> it looked like a two year old. You know, the girl that I was in love with who I thought was you, who was a drug addict and going out with fucking other guys, she also wrapped presents like a two year old. <gasps> Lauren, no, stop. I've heard enough. You'd think that he would like that she had the rapping skills of a two year old considering his predilection. Oh, no, okay. Well, that's. Um, <laughs> but but also, wouldn't he just be happy that she wrapped that she wrapped it? You that know he, he was. Yeah, that he he probably was like, oh, she's so cute, and, and made a whole big deal about not wanting to rip the wrapping. He probably took pictures of it so he could save how it looked before he opened it. Jeez, bitch. Screwed up. It's hard to believe I get come that I didn't catch on to what they were doing. Yeah, because you're an idiot. Lauren. Yeah, it seems like you should have figured that out. Never again. Yeah. Casey. But when or I like did figure it out. When she was pretending to be me and, and doing drugs, that was during like the beginning, right? Yeah. Well, that was. So then why did you still talk to months. her? It was actually about six months after. That wasn't thunder. Not I'm just really hungry. Oh, okay. No. Not a very long time, but. I was also well, spending a lot of time with her on the phone. Okay. So what did the, them coming to your trailer have to do with that? I'm just trying to make sense of what you're saying. Because you, you kind of seem all over the place. Uh, it's because trying to remember the stuff, it's, it's the whole thing just is all over the place. It's kind of like sporadic so, <clears throat> memories of it. But Dan was Dan was recording me. He was sitting across the table from me, recording me, and I didn't know it. Yeah, well, we got that part. So why? That's the stuff that they do. Well, I need him to repeat it for me seven more times. Yes. To um, lie to you and trick you. I I don't know. I ask myself that now, but then. You think it's a pedophile thing. Back then, I. It's a pedo thing. I you wouldn't part get of it. it was because I still had feelings for winning, and but, Emma. Was but she was pretending. Me. Yeah. Yeah, she was pretending. Uh, so you basically yeah. had yeah, feelings was. for someone who didn't even exist. Yeah. You put it that way. But see, I wasn't pretending, so my feelings were still there. So it was like I was holding on to something that wasn't real, but it was hard to let yeah, go. Yeah, but you get what I'm saying. So when she was pretending to be me, and then you found out she wasn't me why'd you say basically the person you fell in love with didn't exist the entire time exactly right so then why after that did you continue talking to her 
after well, you found out that it wasn't me, <laughs> that she didn't love you, and everything she like, said. All Casey does is question Lauren about why he continues to get catfish. And she's a little bit mean about it sometimes. It, it couldn't have been more clear. Like, it, it's just warning after warning. Well, why would you do that? Giving Lauren every opportunity to see that this is a catfish. If Ramona was a test of how far, like, you know, just testing the waters to see what Lauren was about and who he was, this was just to see. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that was the goal, but like what, what this accomplished is how in your face can you be with Lauren about the fact that you're getting catfish and still have him stick around? It seems like you can be pretty explicit about it. Short of saying, Lauren, I'm catfishing you. This is a catfish. I'm fucking with you. This doesn't mean anything. And even then, I think you, if you told him, I'm just joking with you. I was just fucking with you because I thought it was funny. No, Ember did that at one point. She told him. Oh, like, I remember that. She's like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he just thought like, oh, you, haha, you're funny. Yeah. He'll want to believe it. Just that's the same reason he can fall for those scams and the work from home things, the get rich quick. He he wants to believe that it can be that easy. He wants to believe that you can get a great reward with very little work. Which so you know, I, I could see Lorne being a guy who would spend a ton of money on the lottery if well, he see, had money to spend. That's where you're wrong because I know for a fact that the Nigerian prince that has contacted me is real. Well, that guy's real. Yeah. 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 Please keep answering him. And by the way, uh, that <laughs> that money order and the oh. vanilla cards that you're supposed to be getting haven't haven't been purchased yet. So I'd love to. Um, yeah, I'd love for that money to be unlocked by the treasury. But until you send that ten percent, it's not going to happen. I'll get on. This is the ASAP. final time. Absolutely the fi the final the final wheel that has to be greased uh, for that money to be released from Dikembe. And then I get ten million dollars. Ten million. Ten million. Because the then her then her sister started in on me. Yeah. Her sister wanted Oh Jesus. <laughs> yeah. How many women have sex with you? Uh, About four dozen of them. Fucked up, I'm telling you. Well, so after she liked you, why would her sister all of a sudden not also be a liar? Then, uh, I don't know. They they seem so different the way the way that they talk. I don't even know if she what? she was really your sister. <laughs> you it, was her? it was really her niece. Yep. Huh? So you thought you were dating her sister? Well, I started to for yeah. for a little bit. Why would you date anymore. your girlfriend's sister? Well. Because that that was messed up. Kind of messed up, don't you think? Because that was messed it, up. It was very messed up. We were messed well, up. Well, like what you did. I mean, like yeah, dating he, someone's sister. Well, yeah, <laughs> but I was messed up at the time too. So he, he was. You know, Last I, I checked, Winnie never made him devil eggs. To believe and who to believe and how to believe anything in. I was, and, uh, I was so confused by who was who and what was what that I needed to date both sisters to figure just to get my bearings. Yeah, I mean, that's totally sound logic. Most people would have said, run. Everyone told me to run, go away. And I said, no, hold on. I'm going to date her sister. I'm going to make things right. See, and, that's uh, how we think smart. Yeah. I was messed up with everything that they were doing. And, and I was going a lot by what Emma would tell me and and it was just it was a very messed up situation and it's like jamie I, I knew jamie knew them but i had only talked to jamie like one time or maybe two times i think i had talked to her during that whole thing with emma and winnie and debbie and, and during that whole two years and then the next thing i know well after i'm done with winnie well Jamie's interested in me. But Jamie's the only one that was honest with me about anything. Was she? she she's the one that sent me her ID. Yeah, she sent the ID. Oh, and okay. I remember uh, the, the, ID the thing I didn't tell you about Jamie is the thing that I that I wanted to keep a secret for for the time being. Yeah, what is it? 
was she she has notoriety. She has some notoriety. And like because she's a porn she's a porn star. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's a porn star. And that was very hard for me. It was why? Very difficult for me to well, because it was hard for me to to think about her going out and having sex with somebody else and then coming back and telling me that she loves me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> she just did, okay. does not give a That's fuck. That's a very difficult thing for me to, to grab onto. But she's, she was always... I, I could always trust her. Yeah. But I've mm. always been on edge with her because of her having a connection to them. And um, so after you started dating, you became a porn star? Well, no, no, she was a porn star before. Yeah. Long before I so, started dating. Okay. So then why did it bother you? Well, because now I, now I was with somebody that was sleeping with other guys. <laughs> and well, yeah, but you knew that. I know, but it, I, I, it didn't bother me before. But when, when I got with her, it bothered me. Um, oh, really? That poor woman. And, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, she's she's really a nice, nice person. She's a very nice woman. And Despite everything, right, Lauren? Um, yeah, that's terrible that he um, liked you and dated you. And then in the middle of your relationship, you just decided you didn't like her job. Yeah, Lauren, it does make you sound very good. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. I know. I know. I even brought it to counsel and the, the class, and I asked him if I was. He brought up the class about his porn star girlfriend. Yeah, of course he did. I mean, he brought up Casey. Why wouldn't he bring up Jamie? Do you think he said Jamie, Amy, Boutte? Oh, he had to, because I'd be like, "Oh, what's her full name?" You don't think one person went home? And stood behind someone at their house and had them go on Pornhub and looked up Jamie Amy Boutte. You know they did. And then but they also know that Lauren's being catfish. They probably thought it'd be funny to just keep it quiet. Oh man, I saw her. She banging. And I mean really banging. Ah, she loved black dudes, Lord. And he'd be like, shut the fuck up, Malik. And then <laughs> Of course it's Malik. Gentlemen, 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 save your aggression for the courts. You think Scout Hagen's gonna come down here and lay down for you? We need to get that cartoon going. Well, don't get Sloth Cat on it because he's really shitty at animation. Well, no, I said I said cartoon, not a hilarious doodle to laugh at. Uh, <laughs> an, actual, an actual animated cartoon. Okay, good. Well, yeah, if he already like had the way. job. I know, but it, it's just it's such a it's a difficult thing for me to. To handle. You don't understand. <laughs> See, there's, so, there's, there's part of me that knows that that I'm that I'm wrong about it, and, and that I should be able to accept it. But with the way that I felt about her, it, it made it harder to that's, to accept it. That's such bullshit. Yeah, I guess you should have thought about that before dating yeah. her. <laughs> yeah, I should have. But, you know, makes him sound horrible. What? What are you talking about? What? Ladies and gentlemen, State Line Snack Food Corporation is proud to present Humpy Dumpy. Let's get down. Humpy Dumpy. I'm yours. Humpy Dumpy. Yeah. Golden yellow corn kernels, they go pop, pop, pop. Then it's powdered and shaped. Chop, chop. Do that. Humpy Dumpy! 
to the Tillers, but it caught in the Cubs of Australia. Crackland, exciting! Hunter Double makes you sing! Woo! I'm yours! Thank you! Humpy Dumpy Tortilla Car Chips. See him live in your neighborhood. We'll figure it out and then send it to me. And thank you very much. And we'll do this again. Okay. We'll, we'll start and we'll start on chapter five. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Nugs. All right. Bye. Bye. I'm Evil Little McNuggets, and I wrote this song all by myself from scratch. From scratch. From scratch. From scratch. I'm a fucking mess right now, kid. Is this all for me and you, or are you going to put me some more stupid bullshit that I don't want to hear? This is Tells me we gotta rather have a fun time. Oh my god. I'm not Mr. King. I've been on a kid. I can't get in trouble for it. I've always loved kids. Not in that way. A bad person. Son of a bitch. Am I contagious? I'm ready for more boys. Are you crying? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not Mr. Bean. I'm not fat. How can you say that? My pussy smells like 100 percent beef burger. Huh? Glass. Glass. Fucking stupid fuck. That motherfucker, I'll fucking not be this goddamn ass. <laughs> Just a car, stupid shit. You're, you're, you're not anyone's boy because you you literally do not realize you're the predator. <laughs> you go, girl. <laughs> oh my god. I, I, I don't want to hear fucking rap shit. I don't like it. I don't like it. Uh, my dicks were very unflattering, unlike yours. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. What? <laughs> Evil little McNuggets and I, and I love it.